1972, a crack commando unit was sent to prison by a military court for a crime they didn't commit. These men promptly escaped from a maximum security stockade to the Los Angeles underground. Today, still wanted by the government, they survive as soldiers of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire Mr. Moore! Welcome to Mr. Moore's online flip classroom and what? What are you thinking? What's your problem? Hmm, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, why isn't this guy wearing a onesie? Well, I'll have you know that there is a huge problem with the world today if a teacher cannot teach their subject without having to wear a stupid costume in order to maintain your attention. What? How'd this happen? Ah, stop it. Index law number seven. Alright guys, so today we're going to have a look at the index laws number seven and eight. And specifically at the moment we're going to have a look at index law number seven. And this relates to any index law or any base with a power that's negative. Alright, so let's have a look at this. The general rule for it is if you have a to the power of negative n, you get one over a to the power of positive n. So if you've got a negative up the top, it moves down to the bottom. And if you've got 1 over a to the power of a negative n, this becomes a to the power of n. So essentially what's happening is if you've got a negative power on the as a numerator, because you could write this also over 1, if you've got a negative power as a numerator, then it moves down to the denominator and it becomes a positive power. If you've got a negative power as a denominator, what you're going to do is move it up to the top and make it the numerator and make it a positive power. So essentially if you've got a negative on either part of the fraction you just move it down to the other side and make it a positive. So let's just have a look at an example of how all of this works. So for example if I've got 5 to the power of negative 2 what this becomes is 1 over 5 to the power of positive 2. And of course 1 over 5 to the power of positive 2 is 1 over 25 because 5 squared is 25. And if I've got 1 over 2 to the power of negative 3 this actually becomes 2 to the power of 3 because I move this number up the top and then make the power positive. So therefore I get 2 to the power of 3 which is equal to 8. So you might be asking why this actually works or how this actually works. Well let's have a look at these for example. Now if you've got 2 squared that is equal to 4. And if you've got 2 to the power of 1 that's equal to 2. And if you've got 2 to the power of 0 well that's equal to 1. Now if we have a look here if we've got 3 squared well that's equal to 9. 3 to the power of 1 is equal to 3 and 3 to the power of 0 is equal to 1. 4 squared 16. 4 to the power of 1 is 4. 4 to the power of 0 is 1. Alright, so let's have a look at these numbers that I've got here. What's happening? Well, if you have a look here for this 2, for the one with the base 2 that is, you've got 4, 2, 1. So what's happening each time? Well, it's being divided by the base, which is 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So when we divide this one by 2, we're actually going to get 1 over 2, or 1 over 2 to the power of 1 because we move it down here and make it a positive power. So 1 over 2 to the power of 1. And if I divide it by 2 again, well that's going to get me 1, 1 half divided by 2 is 1 quarter. Or that's 1 over 2 to the power of 2, as you can see there. Let's have a look here. If I've got 9, 3, 1, well each time it's being divided by 3, isn't it? So therefore when I divide 1 by 3, I'm going to get 1 over 3, or 1 over 3 to the power of 1, because that's still equal to 1 third, isn't it? So now if we have a look at this, well, we're going to get 1 over 9, because when I divide 1 third by 3, you're actually going to get 1 over 9. Or that's the same as saying 1 over 3 squared, isn't it? And if you come here, what you've got is you've got 16, 4, 1, so each one's being divided by 4. So this one will become 1 over 4, or 1 over 4 to the power of 1, and then you'll get 1 over 16, or 1 over 4 to the power of positive 2, which is what you can see happening here. So what I want you to do now is press pause and attempt the following questions. That is for A, 4 to the power of negative 3, B, 5x to the power of negative 2, C, A to the power of 4, B to the power of negative 2, multiplied by A to the power of negative 3, B to the power of negative 4, and D, all in brackets, x squared over 2h cubed to the power of negative 2. And when you're done, remember to press play so you can check your answers out against mine. 
Alright, so welcome back. Now if we have a look at part A, you've got 4 to the power of negative 3. So because I've got a negative power here, I want to make it as a positive power, so I just write that as 1 over 4 to the power of positive 3. Moving the 4 to the power of negative 3 down the bottom and making it positive as you can see here. Or putting under 1 and making it positive. Now we can actually simplify 4 to the power of 3 and that's 64, so you get 1 over 64. Now for part B, you've got 5x to the power of negative 2. Now if we have a look, only the x here is to the power of negative 2, not the 5. So we leave 5 up the top of the fraction, and then we have x squared down the bottom because the negative, you move it down the bottom and make it a positive. Now for this one here, we're actually combining a few index laws. So I've got a to the power of 4, b to the power of negative 2, multiplied by a to the power of negative 3, b to the power of negative 4. So if I have a look at my a's, I've got a, and it's because it's multiplied, you've got 4 minus 3 because 4 plus negative 3 is 4 minus 3. And that's going to be a to the power of 1. Now if we have a look at our b's, b to the power of negative 2 and b to the power of negative 4. So we get b to the power of negative 2 minus 4 because negative 2 plus negative 4 is negative 2 minus 4. Which is b to the power of negative 6. So now if you have a look, I've got a to the power of 1, b to the power of negative 6. Well only the b here has a negative power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move that underneath the a. And I don't need to write the 1 here. So I get a over b to the power of 6. Because when I move it underneath the a the negative goes away and it makes it a positive power. Now once again this has got a few index laws going on here so if you have a look I've got x squared over 2h cubed all in brackets to the power of negative 2 so what I do is I make sure the negative 2 goes to everything first so it goes to the 2, the 2 here and then the h cubed. So then if you have a look well 2 times negative 2 is negative 4, 2 to the power of negative 2 well you can see that I've just done that here and h cubed to the power of negative 2, well that becomes h to the power of negative 6. So all of these here have negative powers. So what I need to do is basically move everything so that they become positive powers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this 2 to the power of negative 2 up, I'm going to move this h to the power of negative 6 up, and I'm going to move this x to the power of negative 4 down. So that gets me 2 squared, as you can see here, h to the power of 6 because it moves this one here moved up, and x to the power of 4 because this one here moved down, and all of them now are positive powers. Now, of course, I can actually simplify this 2 squared to get us 4. So, therefore, I get 4h to the power of 6 over x to the power of 4. Index law number 8. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, index law number 8 is to do with fractional indices. And these essentially say that if I've got a to the power of 1 over n, I can rewrite this as n root a. Or I can also write it like this, if I've got a to the power of m over n, then I can rewrite this as n root a to the power of m, or I can write it as bracket n root a all to the power of m. So what does this all mean? Well if I've got for example 27 to the power of 1 third, I can actually write this as 3 root 27 or the cube root of 27. Now we know that the cube root of 27 is actually equal to 3. So 27 to the power of 1 third is actually equal to 3. So now what we're going to do is just show you how to convert different fractional indices into different forms. So for example, if I've got 2 to the power of 1 half, well I can rewrite that as, well the 2 goes out to the front so it becomes 2 root and my a value is 2 and my m value is 1 so I don't need to actually write it. And of course we don't actually need to write the 2 out the front of that because that just means a square root. So we can get rid of the 2 and that's how you would write there. So 2 to the power of 1 half is actually equal to the square root of 2. Now if I'm going to convert that once again, while well my n goes out the front of the bracket, so I would just write bracket and my 2 will go here, square root, my a which is 2, and my m value which is 1. Now of course once again I don't actually need to have the 2 or the 1 here so I can just rub those out like so and that's what I would end up with. And of course I wouldn't actually need the brackets either in this case, but there are some where I will need it. Now let's just have a look here. I've got 3 root m, or the cube root of m, so m is going to be my base. Now the 3, well that's my n value, so that's going to be over 3. And what's my m value? Well that's going to be 1. So this is the same as saying m to the power of 1 third. This one here, well my n is out the front, so I've just got 3 m to the power of 1 and of course once again I don't actually need to write the 1 here and I wouldn't need to write the brackets again in this case. But this one here is a little bit different because you can see here that the 2 is going to go out the front so um, my n value is equal to 2 so I'm going to have 2 root b 
and my m value is actually equal to 3 rather than 1 in these first two cases. So I'm going to have cubed here like so. So that's the square root of b cubed. But once again, because I've got the 2, I don't need to write it because this actually means square root. Now in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it in its brackets like so. And my m value is going to be 3, so that goes out the front. And my a value, or the base, is going to be b. And my n value is 2. Now I actually don't need to write in the 2 there once again because it actually means a square root, so I'll just get rid of that. Now for this case, what you can see here is my a value would be m, so I'm just going to write m here like so. And then I'm going to write the cube root of m to the power of 5 because essentially all I'm doing is moving in there without the brackets. This one's the harder one. That is if I've got m and my n value becomes 3, so that's my denominator, and my m value is 5, so it becomes m to the power of 5 on 3. So for this one here, I've got the 7 root of z squared. So therefore, what I'm going to do is I'm going to write it like this. I got z as my base. This number here, the, z, the 7, becomes the denominator. And then I've got 2 as the numerator, because the denominator goes down to the bottom here like so. This one here, it's just going to be bracket 7 square root of z to the power of 2, like so. And this one here, what we've got is we're just going to put, get rid of the brackets here. So you're going to write 4 root r to the power of 3. And in terms of writing in the fractional indice, what we're going to do is just simply write r as the base. And then what we're going to do is we're going to write 3 over 4, because the 4 always goes down to the denominator there. All right, so now what I want you to do is press pause and attempt the following questions. That is 36 to the power of 1 half, 25 to the power of 3 over 2, and b to the power of 2 over 3 times b to the power of 1 half. Remember, when you're done to press play, so you can check your answers out against mine. All right, so welcome back. Now, as you can see here, I've actually got 36 to the power of 1 half. So, of course, the 2 goes out the front where you write the root. And then you get 36 to the power of 1. So that's just the same saying, the square root of 36. And we know that is equal to 6. Now if you've got 25 to the power of 3 on 2, what you end up writing is you write, move the 2 out the front like so. And you're going to get the square root of 25 cubed. Or I could do the square root of 25 all in brackets cubed. So I'm actually using the third form here. Now in order to do this, what I know is that if I do square root of 25, I actually get 5 and I'll leave the cube just out like so. Now I can actually figure out 5 cubed, which happens to be 125. So this here looks difficult to start off with, but you can actually simplify it if you go through and convert it into the correct form first of all. Now if I've got b to the power of 2 on 3 and I multiply it by b to the power of 1 half, well this is just basically like your first index law where you're adding the fractions though. So you've got b to the power of 2 on 3 plus 1 half. So what I need to do is I need to convert this 3 and this 2 into a common denominator. That is 6 because they both go into 6. So 2 thirds is equal to 4 6 and 1 half is equal to 3 6. Then what I did is I added the numerator. So I've got 4 over 6 plus 3 over 6 so it's 4 plus 3 is 7 and we leave it over 6. So therefore you get b to the power of 7 on 6. Now if I wanted to convert that into the square root form what I need to do is move the 6 out the front, write the root and then put b to the power of 7 like you can see there. The other way that I could have also written it is 6 root b to the power of 7, like so. Or the 6th root of b to the power of 7.